Hey, so yeah, thank you guys for joining today's session, which is called How Can We Discern and Find Love in Today's Dating Culture? Uh, I wanted to give a little bit of context about me as to why I'm here. So obviously Isaac did say that I do YouTube content for a Christian dating app. Um, so it's been really good for me to dig into understanding the theology of love and what the modern world has so wrong about it. But really, so to give you a quick roundup of my life, I was born a Catholic, um, but unfortunately due to my own will, bad choices, bad catechism, lack of formation and no community, I strayed for about 12 years. And those were my university years where a lot of this kind of behavior and use of people, it just gets normalized. And then my 20s were spent working as a women's magazine journalist. So popular culture teaches you all these things about relationship trends and uh, various other fads about love. And it's really interesting because obviously love and marriage are the original things. <laughs> there are no trends around relationships really. So the past four years since I reverted back to my faith when I hit 30 was really me unlearning and relearning and understanding how love is meant to be according to God's objective truth. So hopefully I can help you guys uh, decode a little bit of that because the world is just telling you a lot of lies and um, yeah, we need to get back to the basics. So being a Catholic means that we date differently. We discern differently, we behave differently, and we also break up differently. Because, you know, you probably will have breakups unless you're very blessed and you meet your spouse, the first person you date. Happens for some people. Um, and then, so I wanted to first just go into what is discernment and also what is love. So discernment is the ability to judge well and to be wise. So it takes discernment to accurately judge someone's character. Um, so I think a lot of that is gone in modern world. We don't really understand how to make decisions anymore. We have so many options that it's hard for us to commit to one thing because we don't want to miss out. Everyone has this fear of missing out. So then why is love so important? And I wanted to read this beautiful quote from St. John Chrysostom. He's one of my favorite saints. And honestly, all of his homilies about marriage are so relevant still today. So I'd really recommend. Um, so the reason I wanted to say this is because love is really the crux of society. So the fact that you guys are all here is so wonderful because I do think that the world will be saved by good holy families. So I'll read this quote for you. The love of husband and wife is the force that welds society together. Men will take up arms and even sacrifice their lives for the sake of this love. St. Paul would not speak so earnestly about this subject without serious reason. Why else would he say, wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord? Because when harmony prevails, the children are raised well, the household is kept in order, and neighbors, friends, and relatives praise the result. Great benefits, both of families and states, are thus produced. When it is otherwise, however, everything is thrown into confusion and turned upside down. So that would have been said so many years ago, and yet how relevant is that for today? Like we see our world is completely topsy-turvy. People don't really understand what marriage is anymore. Divorce has never been higher than it is today. So, okay, going into what popular culture tells you about relationships and dating. They tell you to DTR, that means define the relationship, because no one knows where they stand anymore. They tell you it's all about chemistry and passion, and that's what you have to base all of your decisions on. They tell you to put yourself first, that self-love is the only way that you're going to be able to love another person. They tell you to find someone who completes you, when we all know that it's only God, Jesus, who completes us. And they tell you to have an Instagram picture-perfect checklist. So that's, that's a pretty hard list to kind of fulfill anywhere. And obviously the problem of modern dating is that it consists of just dating people, breaking up, and it gets you into the psychology of being ready for divorce because you're gonna meet someone, you're, you've got that initial chemistry, and then something goes wrong, you're not that happy, and then all of a sudden, okay, we're gonna break up with that person. And when you continue to do that over and over again, it just normalizes this society of divorce. That's page one. And the problem is as well, is that in this kind of Instagram lifestyle that we live, we are not discerning real people. We're discerning ideals. 
and we have these ideals of what we think a relationship is or should be and it's actually impossible to discern an ideal of an idea because it doesn't exist. And I wanted to read a quote from Pope John Paul II because I think we live in a time when dating has become very transactional and uh, we use people, if not for physical pleasure, as we shouldn't do as Catholics anyway, maybe for emotional pleasure. You can actually use people emotionally as well. So I think it's really important to remember that every single one of us is unrepeatable. Um, so Pope John Paul II once said, the human being is single, unique and unrepeatable. Someone thought of and chosen from eternity, someone called and identified by name. So if you think about it, if the world really saw every single person like this, do you think that so many people would be cheated on, broken up with over text or other kind of disrespectful behaviors and patterns of being with people? So that's just me trying to get out of this notion that the person that you're dating is meant to be for you, they're meant to make you feel good, they're meant to fit into your lifestyle, or perhaps they are a stepping stone for status or money or anything like that. This is all what the world tells you and it just completely takes away the sanctity of the human person. So I wanted to talk about the difference between companion, uh, companionate love and passionate love. Um, so obviously you do need both in a marriage and that's really wonderful, but Fulton Sheen, whose book, Three to Get Married, if you guys feel called to the vocation of marriage is definitely one to read. I have a, a nodding head here, so I know it's a good book. And um, Fulton Sheen makes a really good distinction between sex and love. So love is personal love and it's directed to the totality of the person. So that person's unrepeatable. And yet sexual love is to do a personal satisfaction. So actually that is repeatable. You can just slot someone else into that sexual love. That's why the world has gotten it all distorted because they're putting sexual love first. And that's why you have you know, promiscuity and people who date various people who they're also being intimate with. So I think that's really important to understand this companionate love because that is the foundation of any good relationship. And as Catholics, we're called to build that friendship first and not rely on that kind of physical chemistry because there's a lot of science behind um, why, you know, being physically intimate with someone will bond you to that person. It's how God designed for marriage. And the problem is when you're doing that in dating, it's really gonna just confuse you and not allow you to discern if this is the right person for you. Um, so does the one exist? I think that's another kind of Disney uh, concept where we think this is gonna be our knight in shining armor, or our princess, and it's the person that has been destined for us from day one. And although God obviously does know who we're going to end up with, we also have free will and we have, you know, we can make these choices and decisions and God wants us to do that. So I think having this ideal of the one can sometimes actually be quite dangerous if you're the type of person who finds it difficult to keep your thoughts captive, as it says in the Bible, if you find it hard to not let your imagination wander and to not be able to see people for how they truly are now because I think it's really important to love and accept people as they are now. If you try to date someone and think, oh, if only they could change, then I would love them. Or if only X, Y, and Z was different. You have to take someone for how, who they are today because they might never change. They might change, but they might never change. So when you idolize marriage, as I think sometimes is the temptation for Catholics, I certainly did it it can blind you to actually being able to see red flags or green flags. And I'll go on to, I'll go on to some green flags in a little bit. So as well, singleness. I don't know who in this audience is single, but when people say singleness is a gift, you probably roll your eyes and think, I'm, I'm tired of being single. I want to meet my person. Completely understandable. But singleness really is a gift because it's a chance for you to grow into virtue and to grow and become the person that you want to attract. So I love another Fulton Sheen quote, um, which says, when a man loves a woman, he has to become worthy of her. The higher her virtue, the more noble her character, the more devoted she is to truth, justice, goodness, the more a man has to aspire to be worthy of her. The history of civilization could actually be written in terms of the level of its women. And obviously this is aimed at women, but saying that, you know, when you are virtuous, it really inspires the person you're with to, to rise to that virtue. So it's a wonderful time to just really be able to 
dig into your faith and, and grow in those virtues because it gets a lot muddier when you are in a relationship and you suddenly get distracted and things. So I wanted to give some practical dating tips. I just wanted to get um, a little feel like how many people know the term courtship and actually know what that means? Okay, I've got a few. Okay, great. So I really like this idea of courtship because it really removes from that kind of modern transactional mode of dating. So courtship is really, sorry to use a very overused term, but it's very intentional and purposeful. It's a process that's carried out with marriage as the ultimate goal. So although I'm not saying you should go to a coffee with someone and be like, am I going to marry you? Because that's a bit intense. Um, you should always have it in mind. So for example, if you have a set value like... Um, you know you definitely want to, I mean, this is a bit of a basic one, you know you definitely want to um, raise your children going to a Catholic school or being homeschooled, something like that, which is something that for you is like something that you do not want to budge on. And then you meet someone who's like, actually, I want our children to go to secular school. That might be something that already kind of allows you to see this person maybe isn't for me. Obviously, if you guys are very set in that way, because it's a conversation as well. Um, so it's just about really... Yes, being intentional about your dating and not just doing it frivolously. And then I wanted to talk about the importance of community and chastity within courtship. So the nice thing about when you're courting someone is you're normally um, within community. So it might be that you guys like someone in this room, but you're just like talking amongst yourselves in this room. So it's very much, um, there's no place for temptation. There's no place for um, just living in this bubble. Cause it's also very easy when you fancy someone to just be in a bubble and not to be able to see how do they treat others? Are they patient? Are they kind? Um, so it's really good to date within community and get the opinions of people that you love to see what they're like in church, to see um, how they fit in with your uh, with that lifestyle because you know when you're married you're not just going to be married in isolation you're going to be hopefully within community so that's always something that's really important and then chastity I'm not going to go into physical chastity but obviously hopefully we all know that um, I wanted to dig deeper into this idea of emotional chastity and using people for emotional pleasure which actually we all can do so um, for example I I'm very prideful, so I like praise. So sometimes I might put myself in a situation where I know people are going to praise me. And that is actually using that person, especially if I'm going with that intention. And it's the same with dating. It can be like, oh, you know, I don't actually think I have a future with this person, but it's gonna make me feel really good that they're gonna take me out for dinner or something like that. So I think it's really important to just be aware and ask yourself, am I being emotionally chased as well as physically chased? And am I really, caring for this person's heart as well as I would like them to do for me. So for example, I'm a very creative person, so I like to make up stories about people in my head, so I like to try my first name with someone's last name, and all these things that a lot of us probably do and might not want to admit it. This is all indulging in that kind of intensity of this imagination, and you're not seeing the person for who they really are. You're you know, building up an idea of them. Another Fulton Sheen quote, I'm sorry, I read the book recently. Um, he says, you must remember to love people and use things rather than to love things and use people. Always remember that. It's very, very easy. You might not think that you're capable of doing it, but I think we all are and we need to be aware of that. So let's ask, what is love? Is love a feeling? The Catechism says emotions and feelings can be taken up in the virtues or perverted by the vices. And obviously the modern world tells you, you know, you'll wait until you fall in love and, uh, you know, it'll happen. And you're just, you're, you're this passive agent that it happens to. And that completely ignores what we understand love to be, what God has taught us that love is, which is an act of the will. We do not fall passively into love. We actively choose it. And that love is to will the good of the other. And being self-giving when it comes to love is completely countercultural because today everyone tells you it's the age of self-love and self-care. So it's very difficult these days to really be able to um, unlearn that and unpackage that because I think we kind of put, my ego is like way up here and God needs it to be like way down there. So yes, and then I just want to talk a little bit about the science behind love and happiness. So obviously physical intimacy, it bonds you to a person, it blinds your judgment. Uh, I like to say that having sex before marriage is basically dating drunk. You are inebriated the whole time. You cannot actually truly see the person for who they are. So it's not a good idea. And 
The thing about our brains is that God wired us to be happy, but the thing is, is nowadays we have so many options that it actually makes it very difficult. So while dating apps are making finding someone easier, we're overwhelmed by choice. And consumer science research shows that the paradox of choice, if we have too many options, we find it harder to make any decisions. And then when we make a decision, we actually walk away unhappier because we found it so difficult to make that decision in the first place. And then we suddenly start thinking, was that the right decision? Um, what about the other options and all these things? So it's really becoming this disposable dating scene, which is awful to think of people as disposable. So really as a generation, as a culture, we need to relearn commitment and understand how to delight in our decisions. There's a really great um, psychological study about how the less decisions we have, the easier it is for us to make a decision and the easier it is for us to delight in that decision. The more options we have, the more difficult it is and the more we just, we cannot delight in the decision we made because we just feel like there were so many things that we could have actually, you know, said yes to and then the moment something becomes difficult or you have an argument or someone gets ill, you're thinking, oh, I shouldn't have chosen that person. I should have gone for X, Y and Z. And that's just a really miserable way to live because you're constantly going to be seeking happiness that can never be fulfilled. We also, as a generation, have an overwhelming sense of perfectionism. So not only do we have this difficulty and fear of making a choice, we have this overwhelming sense of choice, which is a terrible recipe for dating. So what we have now is a distorted view of real life because we have this sense of fantasy, which comes from more innocently from Instagram and more distortedly from pornography. So we have these distorted views and no one can ever live up to them, which is a dangerous place to be. So let me make sure I'm not rushing you through these. I wanted to talk a little bit about some green flags to finish with because everywhere talks about red flags, red flag, red flag. Oh, he doesn't like coffee, red flag. Oh, he doesn't like dogs, red flag. That is a red flag. Um, and and um, so I want to talk about some green flags because I think that's going to be, that's going to be how God is actually going to tell you if you're with the right person. God doesn't um, operate through fear. He operates through goodness. So to go to the Bible in Galatians 5, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you feel these things when you're with the person that you're dating? Ask yourself. And then in 1 Corinthians, there's that beautiful verse on love that everyone reads at their wedding. <laughs> you know, love is patient, love is kind. So can you swap out love for the name of the person you're dating? So let's go with Joe. Now let's go with Bob. Bob is funnier. Bob is patient. Bob is kind. Bob does not envy. Bob does not boast. Bob is not proud. Bob is not rude. Bob is not self-seeking. Bob is not easily angered. Bob keeps no account of wrongs. Love takes no pleasure. Oh, sorry. Bob takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth. I mean, Bob sounds really amazing, right? So I think it's obviously no one is perfect, but it's so good to really put, put yourself in this as well. You know, take the word love out and put yourself in and ask yourself if you're those things. So I'm going to give you a quick list of some green flags, which I think will hopefully help you guys discern. Is the person you're dating clear in what they want in their plans for the future? Do they have clear ideas about what the marriage commitment entails? Are their words and actions aligned? Do they make you a priority without obsessively focusing on you? Because remember, you do not want to be idolized because then you'll just be on a pedestal that you know, you're going to fall off of at some point. Do you guys have aligned values and vision? Do you, does the person have a healthy lifestyle and are they focused on longer term vision? Do they embrace the idea of the distinction between a man and a woman's role in a relationship? And are they solution focused? Oh, sorry. Do you have solution focused talks about moving forward? You don't want to just be stagnant with someone. You want to see that the goal is to intentionally date. So just to give you a quick conclusion, ladies, pray for that first Timothy man. So he is above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. And men, get yourself a Proverbs 31 woman, clothed with strength and dignity, speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. And as a reminder to ourselves to pray for the graces to become the person worthy of such a spouse. And I would really recommend praying Novenas to St. Anne 
um, St. Joseph or St. Raphael, the Archangel. If you haven't read the book of Tobit, that is like the, the great, the, a great dating guide for us in the Bible. Um, and just ending with asking the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, to pray for us. Thank you very much. <laughs>